Today's show, we're going to get real game heavy on today's show. We're going to get real game heavy. Later on in the show, I'm going to talk about getting over shyness. Because that's a big problem with a lot of guys out here in the dating game. Getting over shyness. A lot of guys are shy. They don't know how to spit. So we're going to get into that a little later in the show. You know what I want to talk about right now? I want to talk about what's going on in the media. What's going in the new, on in the news right now, a lot of people are talking about the Conrad Murray trial. You know, the Michael Jackson death and the doctor that was watching over him, the brother named Conrad Murray. They, they just found him guilty of involuntary manslaughter. So a lot of people are thinking that this is bringing closure to the Michael Jackson case. But the thing is, my, my whole thing is this, man. The Conrad Murray guy, he's the fall guy. The Conrad Murray dude is the fall guy. There's a whole bigger conspiracy going on as far as I'm concerned. If you look at the facts and you know the whole case and you know how things went down with Michael. And I hate that they had to get a brother as the fall guy because they're going to put the blame on him just to bring closure to the case. That whole Conrad Murray trial, that was a smokescreen, man. There are bigger forces at hand here. Y'all have to understand, man, with Michael Jackson, let me get into this for a minute, man. Michael Jackson, man, you know, in his last years of, of living, all these stories were coming out talking about Michael Jackson was broke and Michael Jackson is this and he's almost bankrupt. And, you know, we, we kept hearing those Michael Jackson is broke stories. And Michael Jackson was not broke, ladies and gentlemen. He might have had some debt here and there, and you know, but Michael Jackson was not broke. You have to understand, Michael Jackson had 50% of the Sony's music publishing catalog. So Michael Jackson was sitting on some real-ass paper. So you have to understand, they've been trying to get at Michael for years, man. They've been trying to destroy Michael for years because of that damn publishing. I mean, y'all really need to look into the whole Michael Jackson situation. Look into the shit that they're not talking about. All that wacko jacko bullshit. All these old molestation cases. A lot of those were smoke screens, man. Yeah, Michael, man, was a, a pimp with his damn business. Y'all think he was wacko jacko. Michael was a motherfucking pimp about his game, man. Michael was about his business. Back in 1984, 85, what Michael did, Michael got into the publishing game. Michael got his money. And he flipped it correctly. See, the thing is, what happens with a lot of black artists, they'll either get you on the, the alimony or they'll get you on the child support. They'll use your, your ex-wife to get you or, they, or they'll use your kids to fuck your money up. That's what's going on with old Terrell Owens' black ass. This crying ass nigga. <laughs> he running around crying broke because they didn't tow this nigga up with alimony. Not alimony, but child support payments all over the place. They're killing him with child support. That gets brothers every time, either alimony or child support. These people on top, they start getting into these women's ears. Like, hey, you know, you can get such and such if you just play ball with us. We'll get you some money out this fool. But the thing is, Michael was about his business. Michael didn't have a wife. And at the time, in 84, he didn't have any kids. So Michael, his mind was clear. He wasn't distracted. Michael was about his paper. So Michael used like 47 million dollars he spent 47 million dollars to buy um a catalog that included the beatles songs people think that it was just the beatles catalog that he bought because they try to minimize this they don't like talking about this but michael had a huge catalog that included the beatles songs he had way more than the beatles songs. this brother had the elvis catalog he had um little richard a whole bunch of people and the Beatles were included in this catalog. So Michael was sitting on some real shit right here. So Paul McCartney was a little upset with him. A lot of people were upset with him for getting this catalog. And Michael was flipping that shit. What, what Michael did, he did a, a play a move. When Sony stepped to him, they wanted to get down. They wanted that Beatles catalog. That Beatles catalog, that's a license to print money. So Michael said, look, I, I, we can do business. Let's do this. 
let, let's do this. If you want this Beatle catalog, let's do this. Let's form our own publishing company. Let's merge these little companies together, like Sony slash ATV. I think that's the name of it. And I own 50%, you own 50%. And they merged and they did a deal. So Sony and Michael Jackson had a deal where Sony, the corporation, the publishing corporation, they get 50% and Michael got 50%. One dude got 50 fucking percent of the publishing from the biggest publishing house, one of the biggest publishing houses in the world. Now, a lot of y'all can't wrap your head around that, but Michael got a piece of a lot of people's shit. Even to this, like, even recently, like Lady Gaga, all these people are under the Sony umbrella. Damn it, everybody you can name is under the Sony umbrella. And basically, out of the publishing, Michael got a piece of that. So they don't like talking about this openly, but when you dig down in the case, Michael did a pimp move on their ass. So the thing is, man... When they realized what was going down, they thought that they would starve Michael out and then Michael would sell the publishing back like they do to a lot of artists. They shit on a lot of black artists, man. There's a lot of old school black artists out there, man. You know, they do these little deals with them and then they, after a while, these black artists, they become broke and then they sell all their publishing. And they thought that was going to happen to Michael, but Michael was like, fuck that, I ain't selling shit. I ain't never selling my publishing. Michael's like, I ain't selling a goddamn thing. I'll be all right. So that's why all those cases start coming out of nowhere. They were going to try to drain him out through those bullshit-ass cases, those molestation cases. They were going to try to tarnish his image and fuck up public perception of him. That's why all those wacko jacko articles and all that, they were really going in on Mike. They were trying to destroy him through the public, through the, the court of public opinion, and through the legal system as well, but it never worked. Michael kept beating those cases and he kept that publishing. He kept his money intact. I'm, you know what? I'm going to play a clip just so people don't think I'm up here whistling Dixie. Let me play a clip. And it's kind of a long clip and I want y'all to bear with me on this one. This is a clip of a press conference that Michael did a few years back in Europe. And y'all... You know, Michael started getting real raw on these cats because he knew they were after him. Even his family, like Latoya, Jermaine, all of them are going around doing interviews saying that, hey, they, these people are trying to kill my brother. They're trying to kill my brother. Or they killed my brother. They were saying this. Latoya Jackson said that on the Wendy Williams show. So the thing is, Michael was getting raw on these cats, man. These cats said, Sony, Michael was going the fuck in. He was going in. He, he did a press conference in Harlem, going in. And the interview that I'm about to play, he was going in on Sony. Then he went in a little bit on Tommy Mottola. He kept going in on Tommy Mottola. So I want you guys to listen to this, this interview of Michael. So it'll give you an understanding on what really went down so you don't fall for all this smokescreen stuff that's going on right now. Now, the clip is kind of long, but again, bear with me. The tradition... The tradition of great performers from, and, and I really want you to hear what I have to say, the tradition of great performers from Sammy Davis Jr. to James Brown to Jackie Wilson to Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. The story is usually the same though, you know, these guys work really hard at their craft, but the story ends the same. They usually are broken, torn, and usually just sad, and the story is very sad in the end, because the companies take advantage of them. They really do. And um, um, Sony... <laughs> Sony, be, being, um, you know, being the artist that I am um, at Sony, I, I've, I've generated several billion dollars for Sony, several billion, and um, they, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing and 
and, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer, myself, would outthink them. Yeah! <laughs> Michael, that's some real shit right there, man. That's some real shit right there, man. can't let them get away with, the, with what they're trying to do because now I'm a free agent. Yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I just owe Sony one more album. It's just a box set, really. It's um, with two new songs, which I've written ages ago. That's some gangster shit. Michael's like, look, I'm going to give them two of my old bullshit songs, and I got the real hot shit coming in a few years. Because every, every album that I record, I write, like, literally, I'm telling you the truth, I write, I write at least um, 120 songs every album I do. So I can do the box set and just give them any two songs. So, <laughs> so I'm leaving Sony a free agent. Um, So I, y'all, y'all, I want y'all to pay attention to this now. This is some deep shit. He's like, look, I, I'm leaving their ass. I'm just going to give them these two little bullshit songs. I'm, I'm taking the money and I'm about to run. Owning half of Sony. So I own half of Sony's publishing in, and I'm leaving them. And they, they're very angry at me because of it, but um, I just, I just did good business, you know. <laughs> Tell him! Tell him, Michael! Tell the story! I wish that moist motherfucker in the back of shit up. Tell him, Michael! Let's show uh, ass up. Let's, hold on. I just did good business, you know. Who's this nigga, moist nigga in the back? <laughs> Tell him, Michael. Tell the story. Bitch ass. <laughs> Tell him, Michael. So, the way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album. <laughs> but, but uh, I've always said, you know, art, art, good art never dies. Um, Now, he's about to get deep in a minute. He's about to go into some other shit. Hold on. He's about to get deep for a second. He's about to talk Thank about you. Tommy Mottola. So I go love Unbreakable. Me. You know. And Tommy Mottola is a devil. Oh! Respect! <laughs> man, Michael was not bullshitting, man. Michael was going the fuck in on these cats, man. Michael was going in on these cats several times in, in interviews. I'm not supposed to say what I'm going to say right now, but I, I have to let you in on a secret. Say it. <laughs> Who is this fucking queen? Say it. <laughs> uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say. Hold on. I'm going to say it right now, but I, I have to let you in on a secret. Say it. Say it. Uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say, okay? Turn that off, please. You know what? Know what? I don't mind. Tape it. Ah, oh! Michael is getting gangsta today! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mariah Carey. After divorcing Tommy, came to me crying. Crying. She was crying so bad I had to hold her. And I wonder. I wonder if Michael put his little finger up in her. Said to me <laughs> that this is an evil man. And Michael, this man follows me. She said. He taps her phones. 
and he's very, very evil, and she doesn't trust him. And he is a horrible human being, and we, we have to continue our drive until he's terminated. Oh, oh okay, that's uh, that, I can't get over this moist nigga in the background. Oh, he just having a moist seizure. Moika, oh, <laughs> shut the fuck up, man. Anyway, but that's <laughs> that's the interview, man. But Michael, man, Michael was getting raw, and the last thing he was talking about, like Mariah Carey being followed and a phone being tapped, man. I want you guys to check out. The pay-per-view special I did called Secret Societies. And that will bring more clarity to that last statement he was talking about. In my Secret Society pay-per-view special, I was talking about how certain entertainers, when they make a certain amount of money, like Mariah Carey, the Jay-Z's, you have certain forms of security around you. You have certain people watching you, following you. It's some real deep shit, man too deep to get into right here but check out secret societies and i have a whole section in that pay-per-view special where i talk about just what michael was going into but as you can tell as you heard in the interview man michael was getting buck fucking wild with these cats he was spilling the beans on them and michael fucked them they thought they were gonna get over on mike michael got them and one thing that these corporations don't like, they don't like an artist, let alone a black artist, getting over on them. That's the reversal of the game. Michael got over on their ass. He hustled and flipped the game. Michael had half of the publishing of Sony. Not his publishing, all of the shit. That means Michael was clocking paper off everybody. Michael was not broke, goddammit. Dude, that catalog... Michael's share, that catalog was worth well over a billion dollars. Michael was like, look, I got half your company. I'm a free agent. Eat a fucking dick. And Tommy Mottola's a devil. Take that. And then you wonder why he didn't turn up dead? This is why this dude is dead, man. Come on. Let's not play games with this thing right here. Michael did some shit brothers ain't supposed to do. You get your money and keep it pimping and be arrogant with it. He was real arrogant with his shit in the, in the last few years. He's like, I ain't broke. Hey, I got this and I'm doing good. And let me tell you something about what Mike did, man. Some shit that I really respect. You know, Michael was talking about the, the other black artists that would get fucked in the game. Michael looked out for a lot of cats, man. A lot of those old artists, Michael looked out for them. A lot of folks don't know about that, man. Michael... Like Sly Stone, when he was going through whatever he was going through, Michael bought his publishing from him and gave him like a million plus for his publishing. You know, I think Sly Stone probably smoked it all up. And for those who don't know, Sly Stone, he was a big time cat in the late 60s, early 70s, had some real fly songs then. But Michael got the publishing. He didn't just fuck him out the publishing. Michael bought it from him, gave him a nice little chunk of change so he can be straight. And also, Michael looked out for James Brown. Michael showed up at James Brown's funeral. A lot of black artists didn't show up to James Brown's funeral, and they were influenced by James. Michael took his ass down there to, to Augusta, and he showed up, and he represented. Go check that out. Michael kept it real pimping, man. Michael, he, he looked out for a lot of cats. And Michael stepped to Little Richard after he got that catalog, because Little Richard's songs was in that, that whole catalog conglomerate with the Beatles and Elvis and all that so Michael had the rights to Little Richard's song and this is how gangster Michael was Michael stepped to Little Richard he was like look dude you influence me you influence the game I'll give you your goddamn publishing for free you dig what I'm saying y'all remember Little Richard back in the day used to go around to anybody who would listen I, they ain't never gave me nothing they ain't gave me nothing. I'm the emancipator. You know, he was, Little Richard was going off on everybody saying that he ain't never got nothing. Y'all notice he's real quiet about that shit now. Little Richard is quiet. He don't say shit no more. Michael chipped him up. Michael got it. Michael hooked him up. Gangster shit, man. Got the utmost respect for that dude, man. They fucked over Michael, man. They fucked over Michael, man. Sony, they were not happy, just like Michael said. They were not happy about him 
getting half of their company, being a free agent and telling them to kiss his ass. So what they start doing, they start all these bullshit accusations start coming up. They stop promoting some of his albums. They were going to try to bog him down financially. And then it got to the point with that last molestation case. They thought they were going to get him. Michael beat that last molestation case. And, and they were talking about all the debts Michael was going through and all the legal woes because that did that, that took a lot of money out of Michael's um, game doing that whole bullshit trial. Those trials are them shits will drain you financially. So they were hoping to get him to a position where he would sell that publishing. They were like, look, Michael, look, we know you're going through some financial things, all these trials. If you sell that publishing, you know, we'll, we'll give you whatever we can give you and um, you'll be straight. But just let us get that publishing. Michael said, you know what? Fuck you. I'm about to go on tour. That's when that whole this is it thing. I just saw it on TV tonight. They were doing the show the rehearsals of the this is it concert. Michael said, fuck it. I'm going on tour. I'll get the money I need for my little bullshit debts. But I'm keeping my publishing. They were like, look, we're going to just have to kill this nigga. We're going to have to off this nigga. He ain't giving up off this publishing for shit. Y'all have to understand, people. If you play a dice game with a nigga and you get over on him and get a hundred bucks out of a nigga, you got to watch your back. If you gamble with certain cats and you get or you win a few thousand or whatever, you're going to have to carry a pistol with you when you leave. You're going to have to watch your back. You understand what I'm saying? When you get over just for a few dollars, you're going to have to watch your back. Imagine if you get over on a motherfucker and you got a billion dollars up out of them. Do you think you would have to watch your back? I believe you would. And right now the music industry is hurting. Music sales are not what they used to be because of the digital downloads. So they rely on that publishing. The money is in the publishing people. In the music industry, that's where the real money is. Sales fluctuate. Sales come and go. But that publishing, that's some consistent shit, especially if it's some hit records, some hit songs. That publishing, you can keep flipping that shit for years to come. That's where the real money is. And Sony, they need all the publishing money they can get. And you got this one dude sitting on half of it. And you think they didn't, they didn't plot to off this dude? You think they didn't plot to off? Shit, they off the shit out of Michael Jackson. Conrad Murray is the fall guy. But anyway, I digress. But like I said about Conrad Murray, uh, he's the fall guy. And what's going to happen with Conrad Murray? Nothing. Let me tell y'all something before I go into the next topic. Conrad Murray was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. So the thing is, man, a lot of people will say, well, why would he be a part of this? And why would he be the fall guy and risk going to jail for life? He's not going to jail for life. The maximum sentence for invo that involuntary manslaughter charge out here is four years. The maximum sentence that Conrad Murray will get is four years. So he probably won't even get that. He might just do two years, if that, and be done. You understand what I'm saying? So if a cat will slip you a couple of million to take a fall for a couple of years, some cats will do that. So just think about this, people. Just think about that before you believe everything that they're showing you on television. Just get real deep and do some research about the real deal. Are y'all ready to get into to some game? Let's get into some game. Let's deal with the topic at hand. Today's topic, we're going to talk about getting over shyness. Because a lot of dudes, like I said, a lot of guys are very shy when it comes to spitting at females. A lot of guys will freeze up. A lot of players out of here don't know what to say. A lot of dudes get sweaty palms, musty underarms. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do when they go out here in the dating game and try to spit. You know, a lot of people think that shyness has to do with being introverted. But that's not it at all. Shyness has nothing to do with being an introvert. Because there are extroverted people who are shy at times. See, the thing is, people think that a lot of people who are timid or humble are automatically shy. That's not the case. Because a lot of people who might be timid or humble, they might be outgoing in other areas. 
and it, it goes the other way. Some people might be outgoing and then they freeze up when they go out in social settings where the opposite sex is, is abundant. So shyness, ladies and gentlemen, is really about the self-image you have. Shyness is really about being uncomfortable with yourself. That's what shyness is. It's really being uncomfortable with yourself. It has nothing to do with other people. It is not who you are. A lot of people think, well, I'm just a shy person. I'm just a naturally shy person. And that's not what it is. You're not a naturally shy person because shyness is not a being. That's not true. Shyness, it's when, when people say, well, I'm just a shy person naturally. When you say that, you relieve control of it. It's like you don't control it. It's uncontrollable. That's just the, the card you were dealt. And that's not the case. Shyness is an action. It's not a being. Shyness is an action. Shyness is, is not a being. It's not who you are. It's what you do. It's something you do. Shyness is a choice. You choose to be shy, ladies and gentlemen. You choose to be shy. And if you can choose to be shy, you can choose to not be shy. See, the thing is, your mind seeks ways to prevent pain. And usually at one point in a person's life, if they categorize themselves as, as being shy, usually what they do, they choose to be shy, usually as a defense mechanism. Shyness is really a defense mechanism. It protects you from the hurt and pain of rejection because that's the biggest fear that men have and I've always talked about this in my books and on the show the biggest fear that men have is the fear of rejection that's a very painful um, emotion to go through the emotion of rejection so people take on these shy mannerisms in order to relieve that in order to prevent themselves from experiencing that so you have to understand the, the symptoms of shyness and then you have to understand what you need to do to relieve that. See, one symptom of shyness is really preoccupation with yourself. A lot of people who are extremely self-conscious when they go out. When you go out, you feel like everybody's focusing on you and truth be told, they're not thinking about your ass. They're not focusing on you. People out here doing their own thing. And even if they are focusing on you, so the hell what? You're just going to do you good or bad, right or wrong. So that's the main thing, man. People, you got to stop having this preoccupation with yourself, wondering if every little thing is in place, wondering if everybody's watching your every move. If you talk to a girl and she says, no, will everybody see you get rejected? Fuck all that. That's one of the biggest characteristics of shyness. So let me, let me give you five ways to get over the shyness. Let me give you five quick ways to get over shyness before I get out of here. Now, number one, fellas, you have to realize when you are acting shy, then you have to figure out what the root of it is. What the root of the insecurity is. Because if you're acting shy, that means you're insecure about something. Find out what that insecurity is. Are you insecure about the way your hair is cut? Are you insecure about your clothes? Are you insecure about your height? Because we have a lot of dudes who think, well, I'm not tall enough. Nigga, go get you some big fucking Air Force Ones or some shit with three pairs of socks so you look taller. Don't start belly aching and worrying over shit that you can't really control like that. You got to get comfortable in your own skin. But realize when you are acting shy and you got to figure out the root of it and alleviate the root of it. So you can be relaxed when you're out here spitting your game. And that brings us to, to tip number two. You got to focus on all your strong points. And I've talked about this several times in my book. A lot of guys, man, you become shy because you're focusing on all the negative things about yourself. Will they see that I ain't got no money? They ain't going to know you ain't got no money. Will they see that the bottom of my shoes are dirty? Will they, will they see that my clothes are not up to date? Focus on the fly shit about yourself. Focus on all your positive, strong characteristics. If you got a nice conversation, focus on your conversation. If you got a good fashion sense, focus on your fashion sense. Because we all have unique qualities about ourselves that's fly. But we don't focus on them for some reason. 
Y'all don't. I, let me stop saying we, because I focus on all my fly shit. I focus on all my... When I step to a female and start spitting, I'm giving her the gift of gab. And it is a gift. Conversation for me is a gift, goddammit. I'm giving you some good convo. And I know the convo is good, and I know the convo is better than all these other dudes. So you have to think in those terms. You have to figure out what it is about you. What's your strong point? And that brings us to number three. Don't conform to anything. That's another thing, man. We're trying to be like the next cat. We're trying to be like the next celebrity. Uh, we, we compare ourselves to unrealistic things. And that's a, uh, people compare themselves to celebrities all the time. You see, women and men do this. Women go out, they feel like they got to look like Nicki Minaj. That's why a lot of women are walking around with these big fake hydrogel asses. A lot of dudes go out, they feel like they got to dress like Chris Brown in order to get some play. Do you, nigga. You, you don't put on all that bullshit and you, you aren't comfortable wearing all that bullshit. Wear something that, that makes you comfortable. Wear something that fits your characteristic. Get comfortable in your own skin and do you. But don't try to conform to some shit that ain't really you. Now, number four, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to face whatever fears you have. Face any kind of awkward, uncomfortable moments that you come across and don't avoid it. A lot of times when we see an uncomfortable situation or an uneasy situation, we back down from it. You rise to the challenge, rise to the occasion, make it a challenge, conquer that shit. If you get around a female and you normally get nervous when you get around females, stand your ground. Discipline yourself and say, you know what? Let me go through this. What's the worst that can happen? Let me let me ride this out. Let me just say what I have to say, do what I have to do, spit what I have to spit, and just ride it out and let the chips fall where they may. And then when you find out that you can talk to females and get your game out there and let females know how you get down, and if they reject you, cool. If not, cool. You see that rejection isn't the end-all, be-all of the world. You're going to be straight. But you got to start facing your fears, facing your, your challenges when it comes to the dating game. Just saying, fuck it, I'm just going to stay in the house. That's not the move. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, number five, which is very important. You got to focus on the moment. A lot of people do not focus on the moment when they're spitting game at the ladies. A lot of cats, man, you focus on a whole bunch of small things like, do I look good when I'm saying this to the girl? Does my jewelry look up to date? You're, you're, you're focusing on a lot of stuff and you're not focusing on the moment. And the moment is your conversation, what you're saying at the moment, the interaction with the female. That's the most important thing. You got to be in the moment. You can't. You, a lot of cats will think ahead and have preconceived lines. Well, I'm going to say this, that, and this to her. Then I'll say this, this, that to her. Then you're going to confuse yourself because you don't know what she's going to say. You don't know how she's going to react. So it's very important that you stay in the moment because when you're not in the moment, you're focusing on all this other stuff and that creates a level of shyness because you're breaking down and you're putting up a defense mechanism. Let me, let me give you an example of what I'm saying. When we're doing the movie The Eugenist down in Atlanta, we're doing the movie The Eugenist down in Atlanta. One of my actors, one of the brothers, he's acting, very good actor, by the way. And the thing is, he started to, in some scenes, he was forgetting his lines. He wasn't remembering his lines. And the thing is, he wasn't remembering his lines because he wrote a whole bunch of notes about little small shit. He was like, well, Flex, when I do this scene, should I have my jacket open? Should I have my hat tilted to the side? Should I have my belt buckle turned up this way? He was worried about all this little technical bullshit that he should not have been working, uh, worrying about anyway. He should have been worrying about the words on the script and saying it to the other actor. And because he was so focused on all this other bullshit, he was flubbing his lines. So I had to, my, I kept yelling throughout the whole film, everybody stay in the moment. Don't worry about what you're going to look like here. Don't worry about this over here. Don't worry about what the audience is going to think about what you're doing. Worry about what you're doing in the moment. Stay the fuck in the moment. 
Don't worry about all that other stuff. And it's that same concept goes for the dating game. Stay in the moment. You're worrying about, okay, if I talk to her, what if I put my hand in my pocket when I'm talking to her? Then I hold a drink in this hand, and I look at her, I sip the drink, and then I talk to her some more. When you start thinking like that, you're going to fuck the game up because you're not in the moment. You're trying to overthink, and you're cluttering your mind with a whole bunch of bullshit, and this is why you're freezing up. Because you're not in the moment and you're freezing up with these girls because you don't know what to say because your mind is on a whole bunch of insignificant bullshit. You feel me, fellas? Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show.